Let's look at the error provider component and validating user input. I've already created a new project. I have two labels for first name and last name, two text boxes, txt first and txt last. I have a close button that just closes the form. My first step is to add an error provider component. You can find it in your toolbox under components. Double click on it to add it to your form. It's a non-visible control on your form. The error provider has properties and methods relating to error handling and data validation. For example, it'll show a red flashing icon next to any fields that require the user's attention. It'll also show a message for the user about any possible errors. So the error provider is here. Note the name of our error provider is error provider1. Now we're going to add some code to our text boxes. We're going to make sure that a user enters a value in first name and last name. Be sure you've clicked on the text box and not on the form. You can tell this because it will show here in the properties windows txt first. Let's go to the events and let's go to alphabetical order so that validating is toward the bottom. We're going to double click here to open the validating event for the txt first name. I already have my code. I'm going to paste it in here. This says if txt first length is zero, meaning it's blank, then let's invoke the error provider. Let's show an error. Otherwise, there's no error. And let's do the same thing for last name. So back on last name, the validating event if the length of last name is zero, let's invoke the error provider and show an error. Otherwise, no error. So we've had two steps to our error handling so far. We've added the error provider component, and then we've added some code to the validating events of the particular controls that we wanted to validate. Let's run our program. We're asking for a first name and last name. Let's suppose we don't enter either one and choose close. This is the error provider uh, that has been invoked. And look, it says cannot be blank. That's our code we added here. Now we'd like to close the form, but we can't. The only way out is to stop debugging. We can overcome this. I have some code that we can add to the form closing event. I'm going to place it here. So on the form close, we're going to cancel the error handling. Let's run it again. And this will let us close the form if we're just simply closing the form and want to override the error handling. So this was an introduction to the error provider component as well as validating user input in Visual Basic.